God of War Ragnarok does a good job of letting you know how to play, but this is a big adventure with a lot of mechanics, and not everything gets explained fully. With that in mind, here's part one of the things God of War Ragnarok doesn't tell you. We are doing our absolute best to not spoil anything, so for this first part, we're keeping it to tips that can be applied early in the story. We'll have a part two later on that dives even deeper, but for now, to be extra careful, here's an early game spoiler warning. Mystic gateways are Ragnarok's way of quickly moving between or within realms, but you don't have to go anywhere to make use of it. If you need to top off your health and your rage, and really, who doesn't in these trying times, simply interact with a mystic gateway and it will fill your meters all the way up. Kratos may be a calmer and less impetuous individual than he used to be, but he can still find some merit in breaking random objects around him, as he'll usually be rewarded with free hack silver. Go ahead, buddy. Let it all out. While some of the smaller enemies in Ragnarok can be the most annoying, you can find a brief bit of catharsis by holding the left trigger and pressing R1 with the Blades of Chaos equipped for an insta-kill. Wretches will have their heads popped like overripe grapes, and you can even fling nightmares back at other enemies like bombs. Cathartic and useful. If you're finding yourself too reliant on a particular skill, or you keep activating it by accident, you can disable any skill that you've learned while on the skill tree menu by holding triangle or listen to Father Kratos and just learn some self-control. Both will work. It's a bit buried in the menus, but you can upgrade your runic attacks by spending XP, so make sure not to use it all in the skill tree. It may be needed elsewhere. When traveling on the branches of Yggdrasil between realms, it can be easy to just keep walking forward to get to your next gateway, but if you veer off to the edge of the branches, you can get some extra voice lines from Amir or Atreus. You do remember we don't have the Unity Stone to let us jump off, right? Make sure you check the Labors tab of the Goals section of your menu. You'll find a ton of things you can get extra XP for, like killing a certain type of enemy, freezing bad guys, or finding collectibles across the different realms. Atreus' skill tree will grow over the course of your adventure, so if you don't feel like spending any XP on his initial skills, hold on to it for later. If you're getting frustrated while trying to clear out a section of a realm, only to be met with an undiscovered on the map, you may need to come back later after unlocking different areas or traversal tools. Watch out for Ormer, as they can be a great source of crafting resources. They look similar to Axolotl, but these creatures won't harm you. They'll sit on the surface, making a repetitive cry, and when they catch sight of you, they'll burrow underground. Find a vantage point nearby where the Ormer can't see you before taking it out with the axe to claim your bounty. You can hold Triangle to charge Frost Awaken on your Leviathan Axe before starting an encounter to give yourself an early leg up. Make use of this, especially before opening a door where you know there will be a fight. A good way to get yourself out of a bad situation is to activate your Rage, as it will usually stagger an attacking enemy. This is especially useful if you miss a Yellow Parry and get staggered. Not today, Hades! Speaking of staggering enemies, Picking up a health stone while an enemy is near will stagger them too. Health and rage stones that are not dropped by enemies will respawn, so don't worry about saving them for later. You can keep up to 60 manual saves if you feel the need to go backwards at any point. Ragnarok is usually pretty good at giving you different points to explore and do what you want, but it's nice to have those slots if you need them. If you're having trouble with mini-boss fights, you can turn on an option to add checkpoints to those fights in the accessibility menu. Scroll down to the combat section and you'll see it last on the list. Note that you can't turn this on for certain difficulties. Enemies' health bar colors aren't only for flavor, they actually tell you the enemy's level relative to your own. Green means they're a lower level, yellow means they're the same level, orange means they're one level above you, purple means two levels above you, and red is the horrible and feared three levels above you. Just run away at that point, seriously. What are, you, what are you trying to prove? Odin's ravens can be difficult to hit with your axe, but you'll receive a method later in your journey that makes them a little bit easier to strike, so don't feel the need to spend too long with one if it's getting frustrating. Performing different skills a certain amount of times can actually unlock further upgrades for that skill later on in the story, so make sure to vary your skill use starting early on. You can also power level these skills by using them in the sparring section in Niflheim. Even though you won't get any XP or resources, you can still use this area to get stronger. 
While it's good to experiment with a few different sets of armor as you progress, don't worry about trying to upgrade each piece at once. If you really want to try out other gear later that you neglected early, you'll eventually be able to buy certain resources directly from Brock and Sindri as you progress the story. There you have it, 21 things God of War Ragnarok doesn't tell you early on. Stay tuned for part 2, where we'll dive deeper into the mid and end game. And for now, make sure to check out our review of God of War Ragnarok. For everything else gaming, you're